War of the Roses, the new 300 vs 300 large-scale battle is coming to Black Desert. Camasylvia or Odalita, which side will you fight for? Let's dive into what this new PvP game mode has to offer. War of the Roses takes place every two weeks on Sunday. Each side is represented by 100 members from the Leader Guild, which is selected from guilds or alliances that apply the day before the event. They will need to fulfill the requirements of having at least one victory in the last two weeks in a Tier 4 or 5 Node War, or Conquest War. The other 200 members of each faction will be represented by the Third Legion, which is made up of 200 randomly selected adventurers who sign up and fulfill the gear requirement of a combined gear score of 680. The guild leader will appoint a captain or become a captain themselves. This will allow them to take control of the tactical map and have authority over exclusive skills. There is one captain for each faction, Camasylvia and Odalita. Movement orders and various missions can be given to units of the 3rd Legion. 3rd Legion members that complete these missions will earn rewards. The assigned mission can also be adjusted once cancelled or completed. The captain can form units consisting of leader guild members and adventurers from the 3rd Legion. Once the War of the Roses has begun, it will be possible to edit a unit during the battle, but you will not be able to change adventurers that are already assigned to a unit to unassigned. The leader guild can assign three lieutenants. These lieutenants can also assign movement orders and various missions. The War of the Roses takes place on a battlefield which incorporates the two domains of Camasylvia and Odalita. When War of the Roses begins, participants located within the area will be randomly moved to three different coordinates within their faction's castle. There are stable keepers and wharf managers within certain locations in both Ornet and Odor Castle. You can also use the Stable Keeper and Wolf Manager at the Old Wisdom Tree and Starry Midnight Port. If a participant dies, they can resurrect by selecting a location on the tactical map. There will be two options, a quick resurrection or a normal resurrection. There are a total of 20 sanctums. The occupied sanctums will contain guardian monsters. After the War of the Roses begins, a neutral type of faded relics will appear in each sanctum for you to defeat. You must occupy the sanctums in order, starting from the closest sanctum connected to the castle of your faction. To take control of a sanctum that is currently being occupied by an enemy, you must first defeat the enemy monster. Once you defeat the enemy monster, a friendly guardian monster from your faction will appear. Occupying a sanctum will grant your side various passive buffs. These can be seen on the tactical map. Last but not least, we have the Spirit's Altar, to occupy this altar, you will need to fill the Guardian Monster with a certain amount of Black Spirit's Rage. Occupying the Spirit's Altar will allow your side to summon ancient chariots, elephants, ballistas, and cannons that grant a powerful effect called the Spirit's Protection. Take advantage of this effect while you can. It will help you greatly when combating the guards of the opposing castle. When occupying the Spirit's Altar, a 20-minute wait time for reoccupation is applied, and the cooldown can be checked on the tactical map. The War of the Roses introduces a new dedicated map, the Tactical Map. The Tactical Map will allow you to check the occupation status of each Sanctum and its remaining health. Unit leaders will be able to see their unit members, while troop members of each faction, including Third Legion members, will only be able to see themselves. Captains and lieutenants will be making use of the map the most, as it shares the location and the point of view of your allies. Even discovered enemies will be displayed on the map. Here are six types of missions that both captains and lieutenants can delegate to the Third Legion. Sanctum Attack Sanctum Defense Defeat a Commander Protect a Commander Defeat Enemies Times 40 and Spirit's Altar Activation Multiple missions cannot be performed at the same time. There are a total of six War of the Roses faction skills, and only captains can use them during the War of the Roses. Enhanced Vision reveals an obscured field of vision for 10 seconds. Rally Forces instantly teleports a selected platoon to the targeted Sanctum. Powerful Attack Summon a King Griffin or Calc 
near a designated sanctum to temporarily unleash heavy area of effect damage. Summon Ogre summons a group of violent ogres near the designated sanctum. The summoned ogres will disappear when a targeted sanctum's guardian is defeated or after a certain time period. Obscure Vision obscures the enemy's field of vision in fog for 30 seconds. The enemy captain can use Enhanced Vision to remove the Obscure Vision effect. Immobilize Guardians freezes the sanctum's guardian and restores 20% of their HP, making them impossible to target for approximately one minute. The Armory includes elephants, ancient trolls, ancient chariots, and ballistas, appearing on the bridge in front of Ornette Odor Castle for each faction, and cannons appearing in other specific locations. War of the Roses weapons can be used by an ally regardless of rank or affiliation with the Leader's Guild or the Third Legion. Your victory conditions are simple. Defeat the opposing faction's commander, Commander Narshlin of Ornette Castle and Commander Sephir of Odor Castle. If the two-hour timer runs out, the remaining health of the commander will determine the winner. And that wraps up this overview. We hope this helped, and we look forward to seeing you in the large-scale battle. Good luck out there.